Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my class, Grade Eight Science. Okay. So this afternoon, I am going to discuss all about how typhoon develops. Okay. So as you can see in the slide, we have a good weather and a cloudy one, and then. And the next slide, what happened? What do you think? Now for our next slide, what do you think is happening to this? What do they experience? How about this one? How are you going to describe this picture? Okay. The house is almost submerged in the water. Okay, so how about this one? What comes into your mind when you are seeing a picture like this? So people are experiencing a heavy flood, okay? So people are trying to save themselves, looking for an area where they are safe. So later, we will discuss why is this happening, why all those what you, have, what you have seen in the picture are happening, okay? So, before we will start, first, let's have to read our learning objective for this lesson. So, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe how typhoons develop explain why the Philippines is prone to typhoons, and explain how landforms and bodies of water affect typhoons. Okay. So first is we have to know what is weather. So weather is the day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere at a particular time and place. That is why, usually, if we would want to know the weather for today, usually we look up, you no, know, we look up to the sky, because by that we know what to say. If the weather is good, the weather is bad, the weather is fair, or simply you can say, oh, the weather today is hot, and the weather today is cold. So, weather refers to the day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere at a particular time and place. Because if you try to find out that the weather is not in constant, no, you cannot say that the weather for today is good. You cannot definitely say that Today we have a good weather because sometimes early in the morning we can see that the sun shines so brightly so definitely we can say that the weather is good. But then after let's say two hours, three hours, the atmosphere changes. It turns into cloudy then dark sky. So there is now a change of the weather. So again, weather is the day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere at a particular time and place. Now, meteorologists and scientists who usually study the atmosphere and the weather observe that the weather occurs in patterns that repeat itself. Okay. Okay, class. So now let us define what is a storm. So storms are called cyclones. It originates with warm waters and are classified according to their geographical location. So, hurricanes and typhoons are collectively called tropical cyclones. Okay, have you noticed that if there is a typhoon, do you think all places in the Philippines will be affected? Definitely no. So, cyclones or typhoons are classified only in geographical location. So, there is 
only a specific place or location where they gonna fall okay so that is why if your area is prone to typhoon or storms then you are you already know what are the things that you are going to diba okay what are the things that you are going to prepare okay now today we will discuss how typhoon develop now at first you have to look at the atmosphere why you need to look at the atmosphere yes because that is where you have to notice you have to determine the weather okay so you have to watch the clouds according to the formation now if it if it is clear then definitely you can see that the weather is good now cloud watch you have to study the clouds and figure below and see what weather pattern they forecast the study of clouds is a field of meteorology called nepology okay now we have here the type of clouds i hope you can still remember in your lower year that you've been discussing about the types of clouds because clouds can definitely tell you what the weather is okay you have a cumulus clouds so clouds which have flat bases and are often described as fluffy cotton like or fluffy in appearance their name derives from the latin cumulus meaning hip or pile cumulus clouds are low level clouds generally less than 2000 meter in altitude unless they are the more vertical cumulus congestus form cumulus clouds may appear by themselves in lines or in clusters okay now you have the cirrus is a genus of atmospheric cloud generally characterized by thin wispy strand giving the type its name from the latin word cirrus meaning a ringlet or curly lock of hair such as cloud can form at any altitude between 5000 and 13700 as above the sea level so the strands of clouds sometimes appear in top of a distinctive form referred to by the common name of Mars tails. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So it is really different from the cumulus cloud. How about the stratus cloud? So our low level clouds characterized by horizontal layering with a uniform base as opposed to convective or cumuliform clouds that are formed by rising thermals. So more specifically, the term stratus is used to describe flat, hazy, featureless clouds at low altitudes, varying in color from dark gray to nearly white. So the word stratus came from Latin prefix strato, meaning layer. So stratus cloud may produce a light result or a small amount of snow. So in this, you can experience a cold weather. Now, how about the nimbus stratus cloud? So it is a multi-level grade, open dark at amorphous, nearly uniform cloud that usually produces continuous rain, snow or sleet, but no lightning or thunder. Although it is usually a low base cloud, it actually forms most commonly in the middle level of the troposphere and then spread vertically into the low and high levels. So nimbus stratus usually produces precipitation over a wide area. So in this nimbus stratus cloud, uh, rain starts to fall. Okay. So the next we have the alto cumulus it is a middle altitude cloud genus that belongs mainly to the stratocumuliform physical category characterized by globular masses or rolls in layers or patches so the individual elements being larger and darker than those of 
circumulus and smaller than those of stratocumulus. So, <clears throat> simply by looking at the clouds, you can also differentiate the type of clouds that you are going to see. Okay, now, before gadgets and equipment came about to forecast weather disturbances with higher precision, people merely relied on their senses and observed signs of the nature, right? So here are some examples of signs the rain is on the way. So as a dark clouds roll across the skies quickly, now you have the ants build steeper sided ant hills. You can notice this. Uh, when it is rainy or the weather is not good, you can see the ants are coming from the ground. Air smells like compost, release their stink because of low air pressure. I know you can really notice this when the weather is not good or uh, the rain starts to fall. Then polluted creeks release their stink because of low air pressure. Hair becomes puffed up due to the high humidity. Smoke swirls and does not rise up steadily. So these are the signs that rain is on the way. So before gadgets and equipment came about to forecast that there is a coming rain, so these are the possible signs that the rain is coming before gadgets arrives or equipment to forecast that there is a weather disturbance. Okay, or oh, now. This is the <clears throat> gadgets that you are going to use when you are <clears throat> trying to uh, watch the weather. We have the anemometer. This is to measure the speed of the wind. So by using this weather watch, you can definitely see <clears throat> the speed of the wind. That is why they can forecast how much speed that particular typhoon is. So they can estimatedly uh, tell you the coming of that typhoon. That is because they have the gadgets used to measure the weather. Okay, now you have the wind. Vein. This wind vein is also very particular to us. This is very known to us. This shows the direction of the wind. So, <clears throat> if you have the wind vein, then if you have the particularly, you can see the arrow. So, where the arrows goes, then that is the direction of the wind. If it is uh, towards east, north, or south and west, then definitely by looking at the direction of the arrow, then you can tell the direction of the wind. Okay. Then we have the we have the thermometer. So just try to look at the thermometer because this measures the air temperature. So if the weather is hot, then automatically the uh, the reading of this thermometer will rise up. And if it is cold, then normally the uh, the thermometer reads, reading is uh, absolutely. Low. We have here the barometer. This barometer measures the air pressure. And we have the rain gauge. This also measures amount of or level of rain collected over a period of time. So if the rain drops so heavy, then maybe you can gather or you can collect a lot of rain in that particular period. Then you have two gauge also. Now, we have to discuss how typhoon develop. Okay, so did you notice sometimes that when you wake up early in the morning, going to school, but then the rain falls. Then, Surely, classes will be suspended if there is a heavy rain. But should be that you're concerned. So before school children living far from bodies of water would have been rejoicing. 
Did you know that? Why? Because we know that classes would be suspended and they could stay at home and sleep and or play at home. But then, in the recent years, there is no longer the case. News of an approaching storm is already dreaded and taken seriously. So many had dramatic experiences with storms. So I know you also have experience to share about typhoons. So if ever you have, then you also have a traumatic experience. Once you have experience or once you have witnessed you know, a big typhoon happen in your area. Okay, so we have here the steps in typhoon development. So how typhoon is being developed? One, first is we have to experience evaporation of water at ocean surface temperature of 26.5 degrees Celsius or even higher. <clears throat> now, warm, moist air rises upwards from the ocean surface. Okay, so leaving a low pressure area near the ocean surface. Leaving a low pressure area near the ocean surface. And then, air from surrounding high pressure areas rushes towards the low pressure area. So this air initially dry and cooler. But near the ocean surface, the air is heated and carries more vapor from continuous evaporation. Diba? If the air is heated, then evaporation will continue to form. Now, as the warm air rises towards the cooler parts of the upper atmosphere, it cools up and the water vapor begins to condense to form clouds. So you will notice now the atmosphere has already clouds. So more clouds form and wind speed picks up as the Coriolis effect causes the air to spiral as it rises. So, as the wind rotates faster, the low pressure area near the ocean surface becomes a tropical depression and may eventually turn into typhoon. <coughs> that is why you can notice that when there is a tropical depression, you can, <coughs> you can feel the strong wind and the cold air. Then eventually, we can, uh, we can hear already in the news that there is a Kami typhoon. Okay. Now, we have the condition for typhoon formation. So these conditions are continuous evaporation and water cycles. So differences in air pressure and convergent winds. So... Continuous evaporation and water cycle. So heat causes water to evaporate. That is why I told you that when there is heat, it continues to evaporate. Water continues to evaporate. Then saturation of the clouds. That is why you can notice that the clouds change no? from, from a very white color, then it will suddenly change into a dark color because that clouds is already saturated. So once it condenses, then it will start to precipitate. Then water or rain starts to fall. <clears throat> so that is the water cycle. So when there is heat, it causes water to evaporate. So when it evaporates, where it goes? Of course, the water goes up to the atmosphere. <clears throat> And then, after that, it will form into a clouds. Then, the clouds become thicker 
no the clouds become thicker because because it is already condensed or saturated so what will happen so heavy heavy clouds it will okay it will start to precipitate that is why there is already rain okay now the differences in air pressure so if the air pressure drops too low the strong storm will surely form okay kaya nga naririnig natin sa news ah bat malakas ang hangin kasi may low pressure di ba okay so that is why we have to uh, listen also to the news especially when the weather is really bad so if the air pressure drops too low, the strong storm will surely form with heavy rains and strong winds. But what causes air pressure to drop? Okay, so when air temperature increases, usually over the equatorial water, air molecules collide with each other and skate to a higher altitude. Kaya nga, pupunta na sila sa air will go to the atmosphere then hot air become less compact and as it rises its molecules collide with cold air so coming from the poles which is more compact in this the cold air is pushed down okay kaya pagbagsak ito'y isang malaking bagyo now we have here the anatomy of a storm. So try to look at the image or the picture. And also try to follow the arrow. <coughs> now, you have here the eye of the typhoon. So as you can notice, the eye of the typhoon is at the center. Now, so eye of a typhoon, a low pressure area pulls the storm inward. Pull the storm inward, creating a spiral moving around the circle. So if you can notice, kung sino yung may washing machine, then try. So try to imagine no, when the time you turn, of course you have to put water. So when the time you will turn it on, so you notice the movement of the water. So it is just like, no, it is just like uh, a typhoon. So if you look at the eye, it is at the center. It will form a, a spiral, no, whirl form, spiral moving around the center. So you have there the eye, then you have the eye wall, and then the spiral rain band so the spiral rain band continues to move around the eye so the movement of that depends also on the speed of the wind now you have the eye wall the eye wall clouds heavy rain with rains were around the eye forming where winds and rains are the strongest no rain occur in the eye of the storm Okay, so there is no rain occur in the eye of the storm, but air rises towards the eye of the wall. Okay, so walang rain na mangyayari sa eye ng storm. Okay, now... We have here the convergent winds. So the difference between high and low pressure system in the atmosphere create wind. So this is how it is being illustrated. So accumulation of high speed winds moving towards a particular area, that is what you call the convergent winds. So once the winds converge, then it will move now. Loop. So, it depends on the speed and it depends also how strong the wind is. So, 
that is the convergent winds. Okay. Why is it, no? Why is it that the Philippines is prone to typhoon? This is usually the question. Why is it that type Philippines is a typhoon prone areas? You know that the Philippine archipelago is strategically located within the typhoon belt of the Pacific. Did you know that? So it is lying within the proximity of the intertropical convergence zone. So where trade winds converge and storms commonly form within the western Pacific. But other countries that lie within the intertropical convergence zones are also prone to typhoons so it is not only the philippines we is you know, located in this area usually the nearby area also that lies in this uh, intertropical convergence zones will also experience the same as we experience okay so did you know that there are about 20 typhoons passing through the country each here within the month yes so you all know that we have only two seasons the dry and the rainy season so usually rains fall in the month of june to november but now as we notice because of the climate change still we are experiencing some heavy storms uh, beyond this month right okay so <clears throat> did you know that it is the philippine atmospheric geophysical and astronomical services or what you call the pag-asa now this is the government agency responsible for the monitoring typhoons and the weather disturbances and also the weather forecasting the flood control and the astronomy research so pag-asa falls under the scope of the department of science and technology so this is for your awareness class so if you have some questions about this then you can also uh, log on to their website and you can also ask them you know, about uh, the conditions of our uh, city or community when there is a typhoon so it is also our responsibility to update the condition of the typhoon okay now so how far away is lightning this is for your additional inputs. Do you know that during a storm, count the number of seconds between the flash of lightning and the sound of thunder. So you have to divide the time in seconds by three and you can estimate how many miles away the lightning is. So which do you think comes first? It is the lightning or it is the thunder? Okay, so how far is the lightning? So if a thunder is heard, you have here the uh, the table for you to follow uh, <clears throat> their co corresponding no, speed or uh, area where they can reach so if thunder is heard 10 seconds after the lightning then they are two miles away okay so if you can hear the thunder 20 seconds after the lightning then the lightning is four miles away so which comes first is it the lightning or is it the thunder okay so it is the lightning so the light travel more faster than the sound right okay 
So again, light travel faster than the sound. Thus, we see lightning before we hear the thunder. Right? So, if you can hear this, then you have to go to a safe location. If time between the lightning flash and the rumble is 30 seconds or less. So, you have to look for a safer place for you to be safe when there is lightning. And of course, thunder. Because I know, as far as I know, you are also scared when you can hear a thunder. Especially if it is a big thunder. And of course, a strong lightning. Now, for your awareness class, we also have here the public storm warning signals. So, please try to uh, <clears throat> be aware when you are go when and where and what and what you have what are you going to do for signal number one winds of 30 to 60 kilometer per hour so the impact of the winds this is how you are going to uh, categorize now if it is really heavy or what so uh, as you can see, if there is a tw uh, if the twigs and branches of small trees may be broken, some houses of very light materials, nipa or cologne, may be partially unroofed. Then, people are advised to listen to the latest severe weather bulletin issued by the Pagasa. So these are the precautionary measures. So these are what you are supposed to do when. It is already signal 1, signal 2, signal 3, and signal 4. When is the right time for you to evacuate or when is the right time for you to leave the place for your safety? And of course, you always have to monitor, as what I have told you, you always have to monitor and keep update about the... Uh, about what is happening already then <clears throat> do not just sleep so try to be cautious and try to be vigilant when situation no situation comes like this okay so how landforms and bodies of water affects typhoon of course elevated landforms and bodies of water can have an effect on typhoon so, you have here the orographic precipitation. So, orographic lifting, of course, when air flows over mountains, it is forced to rise, causing rain or snow over the mountains. Then, places near the sea where mountains and hills experience the orographic effects illustrated in this picture below. So, when wind coming from sea is heavy, with resulting into a cloud formation. And then, hot rises up in water vapor condenses. Mm, sometimes resulting in cloud formation. So most of the rain can roll down on the seaside. So cool air descends on the lee side, but because it is drier and warmer, on the lee side water evaporates and the air becomes dry. Leaving a little rain to fall in the sheltered side mountain a resulting rain shadow is a dry is a dry r in the lead side which can be the risk for droughts so areas in the philippines that lie on the lead side of mountains ranges mountain ranges experiences less typhoon that of the rest of the country that are exposed to the sea okay So I hope plus we will go over and try to read more about <coughs> how typhoons develop and what are the things to consider and what are the things to prepare when there is a coming typhoon. And this is for our own safety and preparedness. 
So the is the end of our lesson for today. And I hope uh, you can gain some knowledge about the preparation or about watching the weather or forecasting the weather. <clears throat> and this may lead you to a be a responsible individual when there is a coming typhoon in our community or in our place. Okay, so thank you and God bless. Okay. We still have to discuss this, no? <clears throat> Preparing for a typhoon. So what are the things that you are going to pack? Or what are the things that you are going to prepare if there is a typhoon? This is a sort of a preparedness kit that you are going to prepare. So what you have to pack is <clears throat> the only necessary things, no? Are you always have to pack what are the things that you are going to carry when there is <clears throat> a disaster. So a few more things that you can have handy, especially if you live in high-risk areas. Okay, so you have a list of emergency numbers ready. You have barangay, police, fire department, hospitals, etc. So you make sure that you all have a list of these numbers. Then have a list of contact numbers to family members. Then some cash, solar charger, drinking water, okay? Then you also have to bring with you medicine like vitamin C, raincoat, solar charger, drinking water, dry set of clothes, and of course, blanket. You can even bring jackets with you. Then of course, cell phone cards for prepaid and solar charger. Uh -oh. <clears throat> and then... You also have to wrap this in, or you have to put these things, all these things in a cellophane. For it, when there is a rain, or of course, they are all safe. And you can use all of this. So make sure all you have to pack are all usable. Now, you also have here a rainfall advisories, classification, and measurements. So, color-coded rainfall advisories and classification. So, this is also very much important for you to respond, no? For you to respond, what are you going to do when there is a red advisory, orange advisory, and yellow advisory? So, try to be aware of this. And, of course, the flood possibility. So by looking at these advisories, then you already know that there is a serious flooding or the flood is threatening already or flooding is possible, then, of course, if you need to evacuate the place. Okay, class. So this is now the end of our discussion about how typhoons develop. So I hope you have gained some insights about the development of typhoons. And not only that, I also hope that you already know how to forecast the weather of today. And if there is a typhoon, then you also know how to respond to the warning signs. And of course, what are you going to prepare and what are the things that you need to do? And when are you going to leave and when are you going to evacuate? So, you also know how to monitor and how to keep update of that typhoon. So, I hope everybody gained a lot of knowledge about our discussion for today. So, see you and have a nice, nice day ahead of you. So, thank you and see you next week. God bless.